Seek and find. Have you ever felt like you were in the right place at the wrong time? Well, that's how I felt with this text. You see, today is December 26, but it felt like it was uh, like I was just about to overlook yesterday as a distant memory. You see, I was struggling because just yesterday we were singing joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king in one breath. And today Jesus comes to the prescribed story at the ripe old age of 12, 12, barely a teenager. It reminded me of how the soap operas like all my children in the evening dramas of uh, Dallas used to do where the child is in the mother's arms in one episode and in the next episode uh, he or she is a youth. So I was struggling this morning all in how to approach the text as a seek and find mission was set before us this day. Not the ones that are in the booklet format where you circle the words but our text today has a circle around a thought around this familiar text. The youthful Jesus has traveled with his parents to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. Almost a teenager, Jesus is marching to his own drum with no care of, as to how his actions might affect the family unit. Uh, be, remind, be reminded also that at the age of 13, as a youth, I mean, as a teenager, um, it was prescribed that all, all, all teenagers would then prescribe and follow the law uh, as Jewish custom. On their annual family trip to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover, uh, in time in which they celebrate Egypt's redemption from Israel, Jesus goes missing. <laughs> Mary and Joseph assume he's with hanging out with his other family until they go to look for him at the close of the day, not to find Jesus. Mary and Joseph care for him and rush back uh, and to the last place in which they saw him, looking for him. I'm sure if you're a parent or a guardian, uh, you, may have, you may have become separated from your child in a store or mall, especially on Christmas, for example. I couldn't find my goddaughter one time, and it turned out she was playing hide-and-go-seek within the clothes. And boy, oh boy, was I nervous at that moment. But I'm glad uh, to know that she would be okay. And I'm sure Mary and Joseph were, were had the same anxiety trying to resolve where in the world was Jesus. For three days, they search for him in the, and in the temple, they finally find, find him. The text does not allude to Jesus's uh, decision to stay back or that the, or why he had gotten separated <clears throat> from his family in this caravan. But the searching uh, is successful in his, in their parents, in his parents' eyes. Gathered amongst the teachers, we find Jesus listening and inquiring, almost like a makeshift confirmation class of sorts, before he preaches his first sermon later in chapter 4 of the book of Luke. Those assembled are amazed at his understanding at age 12 and the answers that he provides. Those assembled wonder, now who's doing all of the questioning? Mary and Joseph try to get a solid answer out of Jesus as he really lives into his human self. His questions to his parents were like, why were you searching for me, the text tells us. We see that this question of Jesus is really a redirection of his mother's anxiety and stress towards her. Did you not know that I must be in my father's house, the text says? She didn't. <laughs> And neither did Joseph, almost a rhetorical question in nature. So Luke raises three points that I would like for us to consider today as themes uh, in the life of Jesus. The first point in the story comes uh, very simply. There's no place like home. Now for Luke, the temple really is Jesus' home, his father's house, where he finds his purpose and his people and people can spot his purpose within him. A point to raise from the author Barbara Brown Taylor, she notes the importance of the temple as Jesus is carried there before he can walk. It's also important for the temple because the, as, observance, uh, as, as, observant, as, as observant Jews, there we go, uh, who do all that the Torah requires of them, Mary and, and Joseph ensure that Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day of his life. He's carried back to the temple as a little less than a month later to present him to the Lord. There, 
Simeon and Anna recognized him as destiny's child. They saw him more in they saw more in him than ever than his mother and father could. The temple also is a place where Jesus is seen as an adult and others see him in more than those who normally see around him. You see, that's where he picked up all of the followers who would watch and, and learn from him. And so it goes uh, that someone like Simeon and Anna recognize the greatness within those to whom others see him as just a child. I'm sure you can recall JMP, uh, the times in which Sunday school teachers or musicians or even just worshipers saw something special in your child that you might not have yet seen. The second point to consider and to ponder is that family is forever. You may have had the opportunity this weekend to have been with family. Uh, we weren't uh, so fortunate this, this year because of uh, just a slight uh, fever that I had. But in the life of Jesus, family was important. Mary and Joseph, both youths, were chosen to be parents of the future Messiah. You see, they could not understand fully the magnitude of their assignment, but they knew that they had, had work to do. You see, Jesus was in the temple learning from his extended family. You see, Jesus, uh, some would say, was enlarging his family to be those who are life-giving and also life-changing teachers that he needed to be around, if you will, in those moments. Despite not being bound by blood, th those teachers moved towards a familial kind of contact. It is interesting that the parents of Jesus don't miss him for the three days, though, because they were on their because of the way the family traveled coming back from the festival. You see, when they had the moment to come together as a family, that's when they really missed him. In the caravan type of transportation, the extended family of Jesus, as uh, was was uh, as, let me go again. In this caravan type of transportation, they missed him because he was probably hanging out, as they thought, with the kids. But in fact, he was in Jerusalem still. And so they didn't really miss him until they had to stop. Jesus was there with his new family, surrounded by teachers, teaching the Torah in his father's house. Now for Jesus to study God's word or to study the Torah meant that the Torah took precedence over sometimes his birth lines of family and their birth lines of family. It is thought that those, those that were teaching the Torah was greater than the family, not excluding the family, but realizing that the study of the Torah was more important than the family if you really were going to study. Jesus doesn't stay a child forever as they sought to find him after his birth in the manger. Jesus does grow up to live a life seeking after the truth of the Torah and for us, if you will, in our current context, the Bible. So I leave you with this. This seek and find that, G that we were on to find Jesus is something that we do each and every day. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, we're always challenged to, to find the good or to find the God in these moments. That as Jesus walks and Jesus talks and by his examples, we might be better than we were yesterday. As we read God's word, we might study to show thyself approved that these teachings that are in recorded history are not just words on paper, but they may be transferred and transformed into our everyday lives that we might be fine tuned to be more like Christ, that our family might not just be by blood, but might be the, by the blood of the lamb that was slain for our sins. That even in these moments, we are called to be more together than we are by ourselves. My brothers and sisters, I know this is a crazy text this morning to come to that we might seek and find, but aren't we always seeking and striving to find Jesus no matter where we go, no matter where we look? My brothers and sisters, I just leave you with this word that comes from uh, Howard Thurman. 
and is it's entitled The Work of Christmas. The Work of Christmas. He writes, when the song of the angel is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nation, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Brothers and sisters, are you seeking this morning? Are you finding this morning that there's still work to be done in our Christian walk and in our Christian journey? If we walk by faith and not by sight, we'll see more than we could ever see using our peepers. My brothers and sisters, to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, we've got work to do. For after all, the work of Christmas just doesn't happen on December 25th, supposedly Jesus' birthday, but the work of Christmas happens each and every day. Ha! Thank you, Dr. Thurman. Thank you, God. Thank you for the love of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit moving and dwelling within our space. For it is the work of Christmas that helps us to seek and find when we sometimes are blind and cannot see. 